For today a pirate brand is rises from in danger freed. Strong his arm and keen his sedges. He's a pirate now indeed. Here's good luck to Frederick's treasures, Frederick's out of his indentures. Two and twenty now he's rising, and alone he's fit to fly. Which will bent and signalizing with unusual left eye. Here's the thought to Fred, it's very just very sort of his intentions. Pull and pull the pirate chair, he'll do fear the pirate From today, you rank as a full blown member of our band. Yeah! <laughs> my friends, I thank you all from my heart for your kindly wishes. Would that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Today I am out of my indentures, and today I leave you forever. But this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a cunada or cutting out a piano never shipped a handspike. Yes, yeah. I have done my best for you, and why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. No matter, the mistake was ours, not yours, and I am in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. When Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he'd prentice him to some career seafaring. I was, alas, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and buy this promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing. Mistaking my instructions which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound his promising boy, apprentice to a pirate. A sad mistake it was to make and doom him to a vile lot. I burned him to a pirate, you, instead of to a pilot. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of your Shylock. Which you wouldn't have found had he been bound apprentice to a pilot. Oh! Oh, pardon, Frederick, pardon. Rise, sweet one. I have long pardoned you. The two words were so much alike. They were. Yes. They still are. But today my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable, but. Collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself, heart and soul, to your extermination. Poor lad! <laughs> well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel it as your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy. And chance the consequences. Besides, we can <laughs> offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but alas, I mustn't tell you, it wouldn't be right. 
Why not, my boy? It's only half past 11, and you're one of us until the clock strikes 12. Oh, yes, True, but... and until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Mm -hmm. Well, then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves, and when you attack a stronger, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never, ever molesting an orphan. Of course, we're orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it has got about, and what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, of which we know is not the case. But hang it all! You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. Ah, there's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock, I would. After 12, I wouldn't. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. What is to become of her? Or he will take you with him. Well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is, oh, it is. I say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible that I may be mistaken. True. Think what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is, on the whole, plain. Oh, Ruth is very well, very well indeed. But there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. Do you really think so? I do. <laughs> then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her and in consideration for you, I will leave her behind. Oh, no, Frederick, this must not be. We are rough men who lead a rough life, yeah. but we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying there's not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Oh, no. I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and as painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick! I shall live and die a pirate king! <laughs> Better far to live than die Under the brave black flag I fly Than play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart Away to the cheating world go you Where pirates all are well to do But I'll be true to the song I sing And live and die A pirate king for I am a pirate king And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king For I am a pirate king You are the pirate king And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king It is the love of a pirate king, the love of a pirate king When I sally forth to seek my prey, I help myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, it's true, than a well-bred monarch ought to do. But many a king on a first-class throne, if he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through. Ooh, more dirty work than e'er I do. For I am a pirate king And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king Choo! I am a pirate king You are the pirate king 
And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is the rock, the pirate king, the rock, the pirate I will be quite candid with you. You are very dear to me, as you know, but I must be circumspect. You see, you are considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? <laughs> You'll find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. <coughs> I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. Yes, I'm sorry for your cold, mm. but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear Master. Ah, but lately. Oh, no. <laughs> years and years ago. Mm. What do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. That is your candid opinion. Yes. I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I am sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing, and if, I say if, you really are a fine woman, your age shall be no obstacle to our union. <laughs> Mark, surely I hear voices. Who can have ventured to have approached our all but inaccessible lair? Can it be the customs? <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like the custom. Confusion! It is the voices of young girls. If you should see them, I am lost. By all that's marvellous, a bevy of beautiful maidens. Last, last, last. How lovely, how surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace, what delicacy, what <laughs> refinement. And Ruth, Ruth told me... She was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, you deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And master, am I not so? And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a jot so. Upon my innocence you play I'm not the one to plot so Your face is lined, your hair is grey It's gradually got so Faithless woman to deceive me I who trust it so Master, master, do not leave me Hear me ere you go Faithless woman Master, master
shall I do before these gentle maidens I dare not show in this alarming costume? No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. Shoes <gasps> and our stockings. 
intended to intrude myself upon your presence in this alarming but effective costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sir Speak? I am a pirate. A pirate? <laughs> Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession, and to that end, O oh pure and peerless maidens, O oh blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale! Which does not feel the moral beauty of making worldly interest subordinate to sense of duty. Who would not give up willingly all matrimonial ambition to rescue such an one as I? From his unfortunate position, from his position, to rescue such an one as I, from his unfortunate position. One maiden here, whose homely face and bad complexion have caused all hope to disappear of ever winning man's affection to such an one. If such there be, I swear by heaven's arch above you, if you will cast you. Eyes on me, however plain you be, I love you. However plain you be, if you will cast your eyes on me. Oh, that's true. 
While sympathy escapes, free them from your tether, play at other games, leave them here together. Her case be any day, be yours, my dear, or mine, let her make her hay. While the sun does shine, let us compromise, our hearts are not of leather, let us shut our eyes and talk about the weather. Yes, yes, let's talk about the weather. Oh, 
Senses. Men who stick at no offenses will along be here. Piracy, the dreadful trade is. Pray you get you hence, young ladies, while the coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If we stick at no offenses, we should not be here. Piracy, the dreadful trade is. Nice companions for young ladies. Let us With impunity, and indulge in the felicity of one bar with domesticity, which will quickly be personified, conjugated matrimony by a doctor of divinity who is located in this vicinity. We have missed our opportunity of escaping with impunity, so we will to the felicity of our maiden domesticity, which will quickly be personified, conjugated matrimony by a doctor of divinity who is located in this vicinity. By a doctor of divinity. And father is a major general. We'd better pause, or danger may befall. Their father is a major general. Yes, yes, he is a major general. Yes, yes, I am a major general. For he is a major general. He is good of the major general. It is a glorious thing to be a major general. It is the top of the major general, the top of the major general. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fight historical from marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. <laughs> I'm very well acquainted, too, with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. A papanobial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. Lot of news, lot of news, lot of news. <laughs> with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of bees and abulculus. In short, that is vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. I know our mythic history, King Arthur's and Sir Caradox. I answer hard across six, I have a pretty taste for paradox. I quoted elegiacs or the crimes of Heliogabalus. Iconics like a flaw of peculiarities, parabolous. I can tell undoubted Raphael's and Jared Dowson's offerings. I know the croaky chorus from the fronts of Aristophanes. And I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's dinner for. Shh! And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense. Put the fog! And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense. And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense. And whistle all the airs of that infernal nonsense. And whistle all the airs of that then I can write a washing bill in Babylonic cuneiform and tell you every detail of Caractacus's uniform. In short, a man is vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern age general. In short, a man is vegetable, animal, and mineral. He is the very model of a modern age general. In fact, when I know what is meant by mammalon and revelon, when I can tell it's sight a mouse a rifle from a javelin, when such affairs are sorties and surprises, I'm more wary at. And when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, 
when I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, <laughs> in short, when I'm a smattering of elemental strategy. <laughs> You'll say a better major general has ever sat at ease. You'll say a better major general has ever sat at ease. You'll say a better major general has ever sat at ease. Your knowledge that I'm plucky and adventurous has only been brought down to the beginning of the century, but still in that is vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> And now that I've introduced myself, I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Oh, well, Papa, we are... Oh, permit me, I'll explain in two words. Uh, uh, we propose to marry your daughters. Oh, dear just... me! Oh, yes, I will, Papa, yes, I will! Oh, but you mustn't do that. Oh, uh, uh, may I ask, that is a picturesque uniform. I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We are all single gentlemen. Yes, I gather that. Uh, anything else? No, nothing else. Papa, don't believe them. They're pirates. The famous pirates of Penzance. The pirates of Penzance. Mm. I've often heard of them. All except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today, and who means to lead a blameless life evermore. Now, wait a bit. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. We object to major generals as fathers-in-law. <laughs> But we waive that point. We do not press it. Oh. We look. Oh. Oh. <laughs> An idea. And do you mean to say that you would deliberately rob me of these, the sole remaining props of my old age, and leave me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, oh dash it all! Oh, here we are again. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan. Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? No, I say orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan. I don't think we quite understand one another. <clears throat> As I understand you, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word often. Pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. But you repeated it. But not often. Uh, uh, stop. I think I see we were getting confused. <laughs> when you said the word often, did you mean often a person who has lost his parents? Or an orphan frequently? I beg pardon, I see what you mean. Frequently. You said often <laughs> frequently. <laughs> no, only once. Exactly. You said often frequently only once. Dark and dismal fate, forgo your cruel employ. Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy. An orphan boy. An orphan boy. I may call my own. Poor fellow. Take them away from me, and I shall be indeed alone. Poor fellow. If pity you can feel, leave me my soul remaining joy. See at your feet they kneel, your heart you cannot steal against the sad, sad tale of a lonely orphan boy. Boy, the orphan boy. 
feet they kneel Our hearts we cannot steal Against the tale of the lonely Orphan Orphan I'm telling a terrible story But it doesn't diminish my glory For they would have taken my daughters Over the billowy waters If I hadn't in elegant diction Indulged in an innocent fiction Which is not in the same category As telling a regular terrible story He's telling a terrible story Never was such 
Cedric, cannot you, in the calm excellence of your wisdom, reconcile it with your conscience to say something that will relieve my father's sorrow? I will try, dear Mabel, but why does he sit here night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I, why do I sit here to escape from the pirate's clutches I describe myself as an orphan? And help me, I am no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor on the family of Scutcheon. But you forget, sir, you only bought the property a year ago and the stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel there are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I do know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that they are descendants by, by, by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought disgrace on the... What I have no doubt was an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have undoubtedly called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your profit, Solus, but it is unavailing. I assure you, Frederick, that such is the remorse and anguish that I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escape from these easily deluded pirates that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. Did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself? At what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At 11. And before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. Mm. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Uh, are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only wait my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lion-hearted be summoned to receive a general's blessing ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. And we find the wisest thing is to slap our chests and sing. Oh, when threatened with mutes, and your heart is in your boots, there is nothing brings it round like the trumpet's martial sound, like the trumpet's martial sound. <laughs> Expressions don't appear Calculated men to cheer Who are going to meet their fate In a highly nervous state 
still to us it's evident these attentions are well meant. <laughs> Observe to great distress on the risks that honors press and of reference a lack to a chance of coming back. Still, perhaps it would be wise not to carp or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are well meant. This is very evident, these attentions are well meant. Evident, yes, well meant. Evident, ah, yes, well meant. Circumstances victim have been guilty. Young Frederick, who calls a commander, and I, your little Ruth, who mad intruders, how dare ye face me? No, ye not, or rash ones, that I have doomed you to extermination. Have mercy on us. Hear us ere you slaughter. I do not think I ought to listen to you. Yet to mercy should alloy our stern resentment. And so I will be merciful. Say on. Paradox, 
Your taste for curious quips, for cranks and contradictions queer And with the laughter on our lips we wished you there to hear We said if we could tell it him how Frederick would the joke enjoy And so we risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy That paradox, that paradox, that most ingenious paradox With quips and quibbles heard in flocks but none to beat this paradox a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. A paradox. <laughs> For some ridiculous reason, to which, however, I've no desire to be disloyal, some person in authority, I don't know who, very likely the Astronomer Royal, has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four, his days shall be numbered as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if you were owing the agency of an ill-natured theory. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so by a simple arithmetical process you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs> Dear me, let's see. Yes, yes, with yours my fingers do agree. <laughs> How quaint the ways of paradox at common sense she gaily mocks the county in the usual way is twenty-one I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day. Oh, I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. A paradox, a curious paradox. A most ingenious paradox. Upon my word, this is most curious, most absurd, whimsical. Five and a quarter, eh? No one would think it to look at me. You're mad now, I'll be bound. The truth fails. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered that you had killed two of your comrades. No, uh, my uh, comrades? Yes. I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. No. You're apprenticed to us until, until my 21st year. Until your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you're as yet only five and a quarter. But, but you're surely not going to hold me to that. No, we merely remind you of that fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Oh, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond just as the cup of happiness was at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Oh. Your duty? Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty. And my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous conning. I shudder at the thought that I've ever been involved with it. But duty is before all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. Oh, horror. What, what is, is the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no, I dare not do it. And yet, as one of your bands. Speak out, I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley, the father of my Mabel. Yes yes, yes, yes. He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan? He did. It breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore, yet, as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my bounden duty to inform you that General Stanley is no orphan. What? what? More than that, he never was one. Am I to understand that in order to save his contemptible life, he dared to practice on our incredulous simplicity. He did. Our revenge shall be swift and terrible. Come, we will go and collect our band and attack Tremorden Castle this very night. But stay. Not a word. He is doomed. 
away, away. My heart's on fire. I burn this base deception to repay. This very night, my vengeance dire shall glut itself and go away, 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 away. If I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dire. It strikes me to the core, away, away. Mortal foul, he tricked us all the bright. Let vengeance how the pirates so decide. Our nature stern, he softened with his lies, and in return tonight the trick. Traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. This girl's like wise. He will welter in sorrow. The one soft spot. In the nature's they cherish. And all who come. The trees are chopped perish. Tonight he dies as early tomorrow. This girl's like wise. They will welter in sorrow. The one soft spot in the nature's they cherish. And all to God to abuse it shall perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies. To serve the pirate captain until I reached my one and twentieth birthday. But you are twenty-one. I've just discovered that I was born in leap year, and that birthday will not be reached by me till nineteen forty. Oh, horrible catastrophe of Polly. And so Ah. Uh. 
I declare it seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Yes, I'll be strong. While the stand is dead and gone, I swear it. For oh, here is love, and here is truth, and here is good for joy and laughter. And here is truth. Oh, here is love, and here is truth. She will be faithful to her soul. Till we are wed, and even after. Till we are wed, and even after. Yes, even after. Oh, here is love, and here is truth. And here is for the day of the She will be faithful to her soul. Till we are wed, and even after. She will be faithful to her soul. Till we are wed, and even after. Behind, but when the danger's near, we manage to appear as insensible to fear as anybody here, as anybody here. to have led you to death and glory. That is not a pleasant way of putting it. No matter. He will not so lead you, for he has allied himself once more with his old associates. He has acted shamefully. You speak falsely. You know nothing about it. He has acted nobly. He has acted nobly. Dearly as I loved him before, his heroic sacrifice to his sense of duty has endeared him to me tenfold. He has done his duty. I will do mine. Go ye and do yours. My own. This is perplexing. We, we cannot understand it at all. Still as he is actuated by a sense of duty. That makes a difference, of course. At the same time, we repeat. We cannot understand it at all. No matter, our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to all. But we should have thought of that before we join the force. We should. It is too late. Well, 
When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment. or maturing his felonious little plan, little plan. his capacity for innocent enjoyment, enjoyment is just as great as any honest man. Honest man. A feeling with a difficult is mother, and constabulary duties to be done. To be done. I take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, and constabulary duties to be done. To be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burglar, not a burglar. When the cutthroat is occupied in crime, crime. He loves to hear the little brook a-gurgling And listen to the merry village chime When the coster's finished jumping on his mother he loves to lie a basking in the sun. In the sun. I take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, constabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Hush, hush, I hear them on the manor poaching. With stealthy steps the pirates are approaching. We are not coming for plate of gold, the story General Stanley told. We seek a penalty fifty fold, the General Stanley story. We seek a penalty fifty fold, we seek a penalty fifty fold. We seek a penalty fifty fold, the General Stanley story. They come in force with stealthy stride. Our obvious course is now to a Oh! 
see a light inside. The Major General comes so quickly hide. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Tormented with the anguish, dread of falsehood unatoned, I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. All is still in Dale on Hill, my mind is set at ease. So still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the Softly to the river comes the loving breeze, setting nature all a quiver, rustling through the trees. And the broken, rippling measure laughs for very love, while the poplars in their pleasure wave their arms above.
a brief advantage you've contrived But your proud triumph will not be long-lived Don't say you're orphans, for we know that game On your allegiance we've a stronger claim We charge you ill We charge you ill in Queen Victoria's name. You do. We do. We charge you ill in Queen Victoria's name. We yield at once with humbled me. Because with all our faults we love our queen. Yes, yes, with all their faults I love their queen. Yes, yes, with all their faults we love their queen. Away with them and place them at the bar. Let me tell you who they are. They are no members of the common throng. They are all noblemen who have gone wrong. They are all noblemen who have gone wrong. No, Englishman unmoved that statement hears because with all our faults we love us of peers. I pray you pardon me, expired king. Peers will be peers, and youth will have its fling. Resume your ranks and legislative duties, and take my daughters, all of whom are beauties. (laughs) 